Beginning in the 1790s, the ideals that fueled the American Revolution also spurred the Second Great Awakening. This evangelical religious movement and its beliefs, which were dedicated to equality and free will, greatly influenced the first half of the 19th century. While Calvinists believed God preordained the saved and the damned, evangelicals believed that humans could turn from sin and determine their own salvation. Evangelical leaders also argued that anyone who could read the Bible could understand its messages. A person's devotion to evangelism was for the masses, not just the elite. Evangelists connected religion to the United States' success. They determined to strengthen the country by converting vast numbers of people, often at large gatherings called camp meetings attended by hundreds, even thousands of people, which lasted for several days. Charismatic evangelists preached the gospel to these huge audiences in massive tents and open fields. Camp included singing hymns and dramatic confessions, but the highlight was a rebirth, or transformation of one's religious identity. The movement's intensity promoted the rapid growth of several Protestant denominations and led to the establishment of black churches. Slave owners had feared that baptizing slaves would mean freeing them, but they shifted under the influence of the awakening, convinced that Christianized slaves would become better workers. Enslaved and free, African Americans found hope in the evangelical message. Thousands converted to Christianity. Those who followed the Methodist and Baptist traditions eventually formed their own version of Christianity that also drew upon Western and Central African cultures. Many voiced their sense of community and faith in spirituals that expressed continuing hope in the face of slavery's hardships. The evangelical movement that swept the country in the 19th century emphasized the need for morality in a world full of sin. Those who chose immorality could not be saved. Those who were good assured themselves a place in heaven. These widely held beliefs, coupled with the desire to convert as many people as possible, generated social activism. The first benevolent societies, or charities, were actually many ministries dedicated to converting people. Later, organizations focused on specific social ills. Temperance societies promoted abstinence from alcohol. Magdalene societies, named for Mary Magdalene, addressed prostitution, while other organizations focused on the humane treatment of criminals. Lastly, the 1820s also saw an increased demand for free public schools for all children, rich and poor. Many evangelicals, though, could not reconcile their morality with slavery and the anti-slavery abolition movement grew across the North through the 1830s. This divided Northerners, who generally supported universal freedom, and Southerners, whose economy relied on slavery. Women played a vital role in all of these movements. White women were the first to flock to evangelical churches, and women largely organized these churches' good works and charities. Excluded from some abolition organizations, women formed their own groups, such as the Philadelphia Female Anti-Slavery Society. Women's new social power coalesced in the 19th century women's rights movement when female abolitionists, including Lucretia Mott and Elizabeth Cady Stanton, began focusing on equality between the sexes.